Hey, I'm Matt, and uh, I'm headed to work again. And here is my theory on the speed of light. Here is my theory on the speed of light. The speed of light in a vacuum, that's the important part, in a vacuum, which means no resistance, speed of light in a vacuum is just under 300,000 or 300 million meters per second or it's uh, 299,729, something like that. Or it's 186,000 miles per second. Stay. It's 186,000 miles per second. That is the speed of light in a vacuum. That's the important part, in a vacuum, which means absolutely no resistance. Why is the no resistance important? Because anything that travels can be slowed down with resistance, okay? Let's say you have a vehicle that can travel 100 miles an hour, top speed, 100 miles an hour. Now, you have that vehicle driving into a strong wind uphill, its top speed is going to go down. And I mean very strong wind. And you might say, oh, yeah, well, like some sports car, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, sports cars are designed to have less wind resistance. But you take a van that's top speed is 100 miles an hour and you drive it straight into the wind, it's going to have resistance on it, which means it's going to burn more fuel to travel at a less speed. And um, I just saw that the uh, flag's at half mass. Um, the shooting in Florida. Sick individual. But, um, okay. So, light can be slowed down. Light can also be warped by gravitational forces, i.e. a black hole can warp light and bend light, which means that the light is slowing down and having to bend by the gravitational force, okay? Also, a light hits a prism and it breaks the light up into different and uh, separates it into its different wavelengths. That's why we get rainbows. Okay, that's why we get rainbows. It hits the uh, water particles and it gets broken up into its different frequencies, which the different frequencies, I believe, do travel at different speeds. And it gets divided up, okay? Also, light gets bent. You can bend light very easily. Okay, take a fish tank. Put your hand in the fish tank. Look at it from the side. Your hand is going to look like your fingers are detached and moved to the side. That is light being bent. Okay? So, you can bend light very easily. You can break light down into its different wavelengths, i.e. the Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow. Dang, you turned white. Red, orange, yellow. Boy green, blue, indigo, and violet. Okay, you can break light down into its different wavelengths. You can bend light. You can slow light down. And you can uh, warp light and bend light. This is, you know, black holes can do that. It can slow light down. So if you can slow something down, can't you also accelerate it? Okay, light in a vacuum has a specific speed, a max speed in a vacuum, okay? But can't you speed something up? All you need is more energy, okay? Like let's say uh, black holes will hiccup and shoot out x-rays, okay? Could that possibly be enough energy to speed up light? light escaping a black hole okay light does escape a black hole there are certain instances where light has escaped black holes wouldn't that light be accelerated okay we know here on earth in a vacuum light travels at 186,000 miles per second or just under 300 i believe it's 300 meter 300 i don't know 299729 uh yeah, 300 million, just under 300 million meters per second. So, that's in a vacuum. 
in a vacuum. That means that when you're looking at light coming through the atmosphere, it's meeting resistance. Okay, space is a vacuum. And you're looking at it coming through our atmosphere, it is hitting resistance. It hit, it's hitting the particles in the air. That's why you see rainbows, okay? That's why you see rainbows. It, when it hits water, when it hits water, it is being um, altered and bent and slowed down. That's why it's being slowed down. That's why deep in the ocean, there's no light because the wa light is being slowed down to the point where it can no longer move. Light hits your body. Light hits your body. It's being stopped, okay? There are certain rays that can't, like x-rays, they can see through your body. And you hold a flashlight up to your finger and it illuminates the inside. That's because your finger is absorbing the light and slowing it down. But it's a strong enough light to where you can, your, your finger will glow. But if you can slow something down and you can alter it and you can bend it, then shouldn't it also theoretically be possible to accelerate it? Okay, the, the universe and many universes out there in outer space, different laws apply. We have planets made completely up, made completely of gas, like a solid iron core, just made completely of gas. We have planets made completely of ice. I believe they said there's a planet out there made completely of diamond. Diamonds. Um, I mean, the stars are just... What is it? Hydrogen? Just big balls of hydrogen. And I mean, so yeah, thanks. Just suddenly hitting your brakes on the highway and slowing down. See? Slowing down. So if you can slow something down, you should also theoretically be possible to speed it up. It will take an immense about amount of energy to speed something up past the speed of light. It takes an immense amount of energy to get to the speed of light. But let's say um, a star implodes and shoots out lights. We do know that there are rays just shooting out through space, okay? Wouldn't it be possible for maybe a fraction of a second that star explodes, that particles are moving faster than the speed of light? Okay, what about this little experiment? Because I've heard this being told you know, this experiment of a train just circling the earth, train just circling the earth, traveling at the speed of light or n near the speed of light, Trap circling the speed of earth. You have someone in the train, okay, they're facing forward. They throw a baseball as hard as they can inside the train. They're saying that everything in the, because the train is traveling at the speed of light, everything in the train is being slowed down to prevent that baseball from traveling at the speed of light. But what about this? You have a gun on the front of the train, outside the train. You have a machine gun on the front of that train. And the train is circling the earth at the speed of light. Circle, just circling the earth at the speed of light. You let off a round. That round is gonna travel, it's gonna be multiplied by the speed of the object traveling, and it's gonna be ex the accelerant, which is the gunpowder, is going to accelerate it. So it's going to have to then be going faster once it leaves that object because it's going to be have the speed and velocity of the train accelerating it in front of it. It's just like if you have an M16A2 service rifle, okay, and it tra it has the 5.56 uh, ball round. You have that round. You have a Marine at the rifle range firing that round. It's gonna travel X amount of feet per second, okay? Let's say you use that same, take that same round. Don't, don't change joints. You take that exact same round and you fix a gun onto the front of a jet, okay? A fighter jet. And you get that fighter jet going, what, Mach 2? You know, it breaks the sound barrier, loud boom and then it fires off a round. Which round, are those two rounds gonna travel at the exact same speed? Eventually, the speed 
will come down, but the second it leaves that muzzle, it's gonna be traveling the speed of the plane plus the speed of the round, okay? So it's gonna be multiplied. So you have a train, really? Can I, can I drive the speed limit on the highway? So you're gonna have that train is gonna be going the speed of light, and then you have that, that uh, the train fire off an object. That object is gonna accelerate ahead of the train until it eventually loses steam, because bullets, over time, they do drop. That's why you have windage and elevation adjustments, okay? Because um, you have elevation adjustments, because as bullets actually don't take a true straight trajectory, they kinda, they kinda, arc they, they fall closer to the earth the further out they are because of the effects of gravity so well flat earthers will make you think it's because the earth is traveling at a set speed straight up constantly so um but uh yeah so maybe for that fraction of a second that round is going to be traveling faster than the speed of light okay another hypothetical situation let's say you have two light particles traveling the speed of light. Okay, they're traveling the speed of light. And all of a sudden, they hit each other. Big explosion. Wouldn't the velocity of the two objects added together create a velocity over that of just the velocity of one of them? I mean, theoretically. Theoretically. Theoretically, it should be possible to accelerate past the speed of light. In my belief, it should be possible to accelerate faster than the speed of light. It will take an absurd amount of energy. An absurd amount of energy. Okay? It will take an absurd amount of energy. And also, we know of energy that energy slows down and loses power and energy over time and distance okay so what's not to think that the big bang if you believe in the big bang and uh scientists do believe in the big bang and actually the big bang was originally um thought of by a catholic priest who was studying astronomy was originally thought of and the pope deemed that as proof of creationism, of God speaking, and bang, it happened. So scientists believe in the Big Bang Theory, and, you know, the Bible says that God spoke, and it happened. So it could have been a Big Bang. Okay, let's say the Big Bang happens. Boom! All that explosion, everything's traveling out, okay? What we are observing now is millennia later, trillions of time later. What's not to say that light has been slowing down to the point we are now where light travels at just over 300 million meters per second or, or 186,000 miles per second because it is slowing down because nothing, nothing goes on forever at a set speed. You reach terminal velocity, okay, until boom, you hit something. But light can be affected by gravity so it can be slowed down and therefore if it can be slowed down by gravity can't it also be accelerated in science fiction movies um you have ships that will go around an object to use that object's gravity to accelerate it faster than it can go on its own okay accelerate it faster than it can go under its own power so if a particle of light is traveling under its own power, can it then be affected by a black hole to accelerate it more than it can go under its own power? And we know that things lose power over time, okay? The sun's rays will lose power as they travel, okay? They will lose power as they travel. I mean, yes, it takes a great distance for that to happen, but in the Big Bang, couldn't at the very second of the Big Bang, couldn't things have traveled faster than the speed of light? And so, 
you know, and in a vacuum, we've tracked light. That lady's wearing driving gloves. In a vacuum, we track light at going this speed. In a vacuum, under set circumstances. We have measured light under set circumstances going this speed. Have we measured light going around a black hole? Honestly, have we measured the speed of light being accelerated by a black hole? Because we know that light can be warped by a black hole. We know that can happen. Light can be warped by a black hole. And spa spaceships and objects can be use planets, other planets, um, gravitational forces to accelerate them faster than they can go under their own power. So then can't light also be accelerated faster than it can go under its own power? It'd be the power of the light traveling in the vacuum of space at just under 300 was it 300 million mile, meters per second or 186,000 miles per second? Wouldn't that also gravitational forces of a black hole combine with that to accelerate it forever? How so? Forever so shortly? Can that happen? So if we can, we know we can bend light. We know we can warp light. We know we can slow light down. Okay, you can do an experiment, put your hand in a fish tank, and it'll look like your fingers are off and to the side. That is bending light. You are bending light. Okay? You are bending light. And you can also slow down light. You can also break light up into its different wavelengths. Rainbows. Okay? Rainbows. That's how we get rainbows, because light is being broken up into different it to its different wavelengths because it is hitting hitting um, particles in the air moisture in the air and it is being hitting those and being reflected reflect refracted into its different wavelengths that's why we see rainbows okay so if we can bend light we can warp light we can slow light down we can break light up into its different wavelengths then theoretically, shouldn't we be able to accelerate light? I mean, th theoretically. Okay, th theoretical physics is you have this idea and theoretically it should be possible, but you have not proven it to be true, but you also have not proven it to be untrue. Have we proven that... Have, has anyone out there proven that gravitational forces from a black hole does not accelerate light because it's been proven that gravitational forces from a black hole can warp light and bend light has it been proven that light has not been accelerated because of a black hole you know so theoretically it should be possible to accelerate light faster than the speed of light measured here on earth under a vacuum Theore theoretically so um Sorry to get all weighty and brainy, but this is something I've been thinking about for a while, and I was talking to a guy at work yesterday, and I know this spits in the face of everything, because in physics, light is the one constant, and laws of physics apply to everything else except for the laws of light for some reason, light particles. So, um, but uh, also, uh, shout out to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, I uh, was listening to your podcast, Star Talk, and you said this joke, and I'm I'm going to repeat it. You know, a photon walks into a bar, or uh, walks into a hotel. Photon walks into a hotel. He's checking in, and the bellhop comes, says, um, uh, "Sir, Mr. Photon, can I can I get your luggage?" The photon looks down and goes, "Nope, I'm traveling light." Get it? Traveling light. All right. Uh, so. Bye. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments below if you made it this far. Um, so, but I, I do believe in my core that theoretically, if you can bend light and you can slow light down, then you theoretically should be able to accelerate it. So, bye.